Hello and welcome to another video of the BLDC motor design course. In this video, we are going to discuss the idea behind the BLDC motor. Before that, let's review the conventional brushed DC motor. So as you know, in brush DC motor, we do mechanical commutations uh, using brush. So uh, in this simple example here, we have only one coil on uh, rotor, on uh, armature. So if uh, I want to evaluate the back EMF induced in this coil, as you can see here, according to the figure, I can rotate the rotor and uh, based on the position of this brush, I can calculate the back EMF induced in this coil. As you know, the brush are uh, under uh, poles in uh, this, uh, in, uh, this DC motor uh, here. And this is the waveform of uh, the induced voltage. This is uh, induced voltage that is seen by uh, this supply. Okay. Uh, that is a rectified version of induced voltage in the coil. So by mechanical uh, commutation, we rectify it the induced voltage and uh, this is the equivalent circuit of uh, this uh, structure uh, this is uh, field winding we have uh, dc voltage vf dc current and uh, a field uh, coil here uh, number of turns is an f by impressing injecting a DC current into this coil, uh, we can generate uh, a field, a stator field, and then by rotating of the rotor, the constant speed, we can generate uh, a back EMF. So uh, what is the idea behind the DC motor? As you know, we have uh, this equation, this equation uh, for uh, converted energy, induced voltage times I, induced voltage in a coil, times coil current is equal T omega. This is converted energy, and this is mechanical energy, right? This is electric energy, mechanic, me mechanical energy, uh, conversion equation. So if I have uh, if I if if I can generate a DC back EMF, okay, a DC uh, back EMF, DC waveform. So this uh, will be a constant number. Actually, uh, from mathematical point of view, this is a constant. And if I uh, have a constant current, this side is constant. Right, so uh, because I am rotating the rotor at a constant speed, because uh, when I wanted to calculate the motor back EMF, I was in uh, generator mode. I was rotating the rotor by a fixed speed. So mathematically, uh, we can generate a constant torque, right? So this is for a generator operation, but as you know, for the motor operation is similar. This is one coil. And as you can see here, torque ripple is high, but uh, this is for uh, one coil. But as you know, in DC motor, if I increase number of rotor coils, or uh, number of actually number of rotor slots. I have uh, a number of 
uh, this waveforms and uh, the resultant back EMF is like this, right? And if I increase number of uh, coils, number of rotor slots more and more, I can reduce uh, this ripple, okay? Uh, within uh, an acceptable uh, range to reduce the torque ripple. So this is idea uh, behind uh, conventional DC motor. We generate a DC back EMF and if we inject a DC current, we expect that we can generate a DC torque. What about DC PLDC motor? So uh, this is a stator core like a three-phase induction motor, right? We have distributed winding, a stator is a slotted, and consider that, suppose I placed a three-phase winding on this core, and I have a number of poles, a number of north and south magnets on rotor, and uh, I am rotating the rotor at a fixed speed. If I uh, do a stator winding in such a way that I get these waveforms, okay? Not sinusoidal waveforms, actually trapezoidal, uh, because uh, the amplitude of the third harmonics or higher harmonics is high, and we have a good flat area uh, here, okay? So we have these uh, uh, three back EMFs in a state or winding. How I can implement the same idea here to generate a DC back EMF that is seen by supply voltage? Actually, if I can pick up uh, this part, I can generate uh, a DC back EMF. Okay, I, I can generate a DC by KMF. So uh, this is uh, the equivalent circuit of conventional DC motor. In BLDC motor, I have magnets on rotor. So uh, I have uh, the rotor field and uh, I have these uh, back EMFs on uh, stator winding. So let me uh, take a snapshot on this page. I want to explain it here. We have six zones or com six commutations in uh, PLDC motor. Commutations are here. This is uh, one, two, three, four, Five, six. So the idea is uh, here in PLDC motor, uh, we have a DC supply, we have a three phase inverter and uh, three phase winding. As you know, at any instance of time, only two phases are conducting. So I am going to uh, do a proper switching to capture a DC back EMF uh, that is seen by supply uh, voltage that is seen uh, here, right? So I take another snap and let me uh, generate, okay. Let me is this here? Okay, uh, th this is our uh, supply, DC supply, and uh, I am going to generate a DC back EMF that is seen by this uh, supply voltage. So at this zone, I have a maximum induced back EMF and a minimum induced back EMF. Okay, for example, phase A has uh, maximum back EMF, phase C has minimum back EMF, and the phase B 
uh, is here, the back MFO phase B. So if I connect, uh, if I connect the maximum back EMF to positive DC link and minimum back EMF to negative DC link. So this will be the back EMF that is seen by this source. Okay. This part of the waveform. And repeat the same concept for other zones. For example, for this zone, I turn off this phase and connect this phase to negative DC link and this phase is connected to positive DC link yet, right? So I get this uh, back EMF. And uh, in a similar way, I do uh, switchings and I generate, uh, I generate this uh, waveform uh, here at uh, these uh, terminals. Now let's use the same concept as brushed DC motor. I have this DC back EMF. Uh, can I generate a DC torque if I inject a DC current here? If I have a DC current here at this terminal, uh, can I generate torque? Yes, you can generate DC torque, but the torque ripple is high because uh, I cannot increase the number of these switching zones because the number of phases is three. The only way that I reduce this ripple in back EMF uh, is by increasing number of phases, right? So this is why torque ripple is high in BLDC motor if we don't implement complex logic algorithm in uh, the motor uh, controller. R okay, so uh, this is the idea behind the BLDC motor. Actually, we have a three-phase winding like induction motor, uh, but uh, we select a proper winding to generate back EMFs with a proper flat zone here. Uh, we generate DC back EMF by proper switching and uh, then uh, we inject a DC current and we generate the torque. This concept will be clear for you when we are doing dynamic simulation. And I will explain you in details how, uh, how we should set the switching and switching times, uh, switching zones and so on. The speed control, the speed control in uh, BLDC motor uh, is uh, like uh, DC motor and uh, if by control of this uh, supply DC voltage we can control the motor speed. We can use uh, PWMs to uh, control the uh, level of this uh, supply uh, voltage. Okay. Uh, in these uh, two uh, slides, uh, I am going to explain to you design possibilities of uh, BLDC motors. BLDC motor is good and uh, its uh, structure is uh, relatively simple. And uh, we can use it in different forms, like uh, inner rotor, radial flux motor, that is very common, a rotating uh, rotor, uh, outer rotor, radial flux. Uh, this is uh, axial flux motor, one rotor, one stator. Uh, this is uh, again uh, axial flux build DC motor, uh, one rotor and uh, two stators on both sides. Uh, this is from uh, uh, another view. Uh, this, is, this is axial BLDC motor. And also we have uh, linear BLDC motors like axial flux can be, uh, it can uh, have uh, uh, one stator or double stator to hide the moving parts from the 
environment. And this version, this is a radial flux uh, DC motor, uh, outer rotor uh, using a ring magnet. So uh, the structure is uh, simple and we can uh, use it in uh, different forms. We have uh, different versions for a stator lamination and rotor lamination of radial flux rotating VLDC motors. This uh, figure here shows uh, different version, versions of uh, the rotor. We have a round rotor here uh, with arc magnets segmented. We have blank space, uh, blank spaces between uh, north and south magnets, or uh, we can have a ring magnet. We can have uh, uh, these magnets that is different from these magnets. Actually, in these uh, magnets, uh, the direction of magnetization of magnets are radial. But in this magnet, the direction of magnetization is uh, parallel. Okay. Depends on the waveform of the back EMF that we are going to generate. We can use uh, these uh, versions. This is a spoke type BLDC motor. Uh, a spoke type actually in these three versions, we don't have reluctance torque, but in this version we have because we have uh, saliency, uh, magnetic saliency uh, for rotor. This is the IPM rotor, interior permanent magnet. And we insert the magnets into rotor barriers. So the structure is uh, more strong, stronger than uh, these uh, versions. And uh, this is uh, one version that the magnet, the touching surface of magnet and rotor is flat. Okay, easier for manufacturing purposes. And uh, we have uh, different versions for a stator uh, lamination. This is a common uh, stator lamination uh, slotted with open slots. This is uh, a stator without a slot. Uh, only, uh, uh, only we have winding here. This winding can be uh, copper sheets. And we have uh, this stator lamination that with uh, closed uh, slots. Actually, we use this version or this version when the torque ripple is important for us and we are going to reduce the cogging torque of the motor because as you know, one uh, cause of cogging torque or torque ripple in uh, surface mounted permanent magnet motors is the uh, slot opening. So if uh, uh, you are going to uh, reduce the cogging torque that is uh, because of a slot opening, you can use these versions. Actually, this version is cogging free, right? Because we don't have any saliency on uh, states or lamination. Okay, uh, I think it's enough for this video. Uh, I wanted to explain you uh, a short explanation about the idea behind PLDC motors and also uh, different possibilities, uh, design possibilities of PLDC motors. And uh, by far, we completed the introduction uh, of uh, PLDC motors. The first part, first section of the course. And from the next video, we will continue uh, the course by analytic design of the motor. And uh, we will start the analytic design equations and so on. Uh, okay, thanks for watching and let's continue in this next video.